Hi, welcome to SBR.TV for our Week 11 College Football Preview. Once again, with SBR moderator and stat modeling expert Justin Seven to advise us on line value liens, betting strategies, and uh, his model's top picks, of course. Uh, so I hope he have, has them this week. Uh, okay, so uh, Justin, your big dog pick won last week. Nice job on that. You have any picks coming up that you're liking this week? I got one I'm going to definitely play, and I have another one I'm watching very closely to see if the line moves a little bit more. Okay, so is this going to be another huge dog? Uh, it, yes, it's Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, they're a, they're a 31 point dog. Uh, no surprise there. We'll talk about that one. Um, a little later on. First, I want to get your thoughts uh, and opinions about a bunch of the games that people have been discussing uh, since the Lions came out on Sunday. And uh, there have been a bunch. Probably the most talked about game um, is Alabama and Mississippi State. So, so let's start with that. Um, a number of posters have mentioned this game specifically in threads. Pavi Racer, Jola Verdes, uh, and a bunch of others. Uh, they've all been generally saying that they think Mississippi State has value here getting so many points. And I kind of agree with them. Uh, I did actually bet them at 12 and a half. Um, as did the guys on the forum. Now Mississippi State is down to about 11 in some places. Uh, and there's three pretty obvious uh, general reasons that people are, are citing for liking Mississippi State. First of all, they've, uh, they have hung tough with a bunch of ranked teams at home this year. They've lost uh, all those games, but they also stayed close in losing all of them. Um, they lost them all by less than 12, including Florida. Uh, second of all, both teams in general uh, focus on the run, so this game should be low scoring. It has a low posted total. And in general, those are kind of games where where it's, where it's attractive when there's a big uh, home dog involved, bet on the home dog. And third of all, Mississippi State is off of a bye week, so they've been presumably able to rest up, get healthy, get prepared, and get a game plan and all of that. So what do you think? I have a slight lean for Mississippi State in this game. There's a couple reasons. First, if you look at Alabama's nine games, six of those were at home. So, I mean, that's a little bit uh, misweighted. And teams always do, especially in, in, big, in competitive games, that's, that's huge, and that tends to inflate Alabama's stats a little bit. Okay, well, what about the argument that uh, Alabama's run D, run D is just uh, so good that Mississippi State won't be able to move the ball? Alabama's got an amazing defense, but they're not going to get shut down. Like, what was it, LSU last week who just got hammered? Um, so I, I thought that, you know, I, I thought the fair line was about eight. You know, I figured the game might go a little bit higher scoring than people think. You know, I don't think Alabama's defense will play quite as well on the road as they have, hit, you know, for the whole season. And I thought maybe 28 to 20 would be a final score. So a slight lean on Mississippi State, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm not going to pull the trigger on this one. All right. Uh, next, let's see what you have to say about uh, BYU New Mexico. Now, I know that you, uh, of course, like to do you tend towards liking big dogs in general, but I'm thinking this might be uh, one of the games where there's actually value with the big fave in, in BYU. BYU is seeming like a team that definitely does have deficiencies, but they seem to be mostly only exploitable by top-tier teams. Um, and BYU has beaten up pretty badly on weak teams that they've, that they've played this year. They beat uh, Wyoming, UNLV, and Tulane all by well over 30 all on the road and New Mexico is probably worse than all those uh, teams 26 and a half is a lot but it's not an astronomical number so what do you think do you think BYU minus 26 and a half might be a good bet uh no <laughs> I, I I'm not gonna surprise you here I lean towards New Mexico I'm not gonna pull the trigger on it till it hits 28 if it hits 28 and a half I put it down as my lock board 60% play. Really? All right. So you lean New Mexico here. Well, I lean BYU. Uh, I think I might play it for a little bit, but we'll see. Okay, moving along to, uh, to the next game. Let's see what you have to say about this one. It's Notre Dame at Pitt. Uh, Pitt is about a six and a half point home favorite. Notre Dame, of course, lost outright last week as an 11 point uh, favorite to Navy, a game that we discussed uh, here on SBR.TV, where, uh, where you gave a lean on Navy. Turned out to be very uh, accurate. Uh, Notre Dame, as always, has their big passing attack. Michael Floyd is back. Uh, there have also been reports of quarterback Jimmy Clausen uh, suffering from turf toe, which may be hampering him. Pitt has looked very good in general, but uh, their quality of opponents this year has has not been very good. It's been lacking a bit. They've, they've had a lot of easy games against weak teams and uh, no real defining game against any sort of elite powerhouse. So what do your numbers say on this one? I think uh, Pittsburgh minus 6.5 is the right side on this one. Last week, you know, I said a problem Notre Dame had is with their rushing attack and uh, – the rushing attack, they have problems in the red zone. I said they were going to have that. Last week, they had three times, I think they were inside the five-yard line, getting zero points. A fourth trip in the red zone, they had a missed field goal. So, it's I mean, they really got burnt. They had 517 yards of total offense, but they couldn't score enough. They only got 21 points. And that's what happens when you can't punch it in when your rushing game is weak. Pittsburgh's got a better defense than Navy, uh, a more balanced attack. So I think this is going to cause a lot of problems for Notre Dame. 
Um, I think I made the fair line Pittsburgh minus 11. So I'm a little bit surprised at the, the line movement on this one. It, it does have, I mean, I, my line does not reflect uh, the injury and the return of Floyd. But still, um, I think Pittsburgh's, I'd lean towards Pittsburgh at six and a half. All right, and th that does harken back to, uh, to something that we discussed earlier in the year, which is red zone problems and how to tell if it's uh, likely to, uh, to continue or not. Consistent uh, good short yardage rushing is what you want to see to, uh, to predict uh, red zone problems getting fixed in the future. And Notre Dame definitely doesn't have that this year, uh, so they'll probably continue to have problems in the red zone um, against good teams, which, which should hurt them against Pitt. All right, and then, uh, and then I'm curious to see what you have to say about Stanford or USC. This is another game people are a bit uncertain about. USC USC is now about a 10.5 point uh, home favorite, down a little from, from opening. USC is clearly not as dominant this year as they've been in recent years, especially on defense, but uh, they, they do also have traditionally a great home field advantage and, and traditionally blow out Stanford. Uh, Stanford may have left a lot on the field in their big home win over Oregon last week. So what do you make of all this? Do you think there's value on either side here? Well, I don't think about any of that. I just look at numbers. Uh, my numbers, I made it Stanford only plus seven. So I have a lean towards Stanford, but I think when you're dealing with a big public team like USC, a better way to play it might be not to do anything until halftime, and if uh, Stanford is playing competitive or even winning, look to play Stanford for the second half. That's interesting. That's a, that's a great angle because uh, we'll be able to get you know, a much better read in the first half on how Stanford's running game uh, is stacking up against USC's D, whether USC's D is, is, is sort of more like what it's been in the past or whether, uh, whether Stanford's running game will be able to be as successful as it's been in, in recent games. There's actually there's two other factors I like um, while I'll be looking to play Stanford in the second half. Um, when you have a public team like, like USC, Everyone who bet on USC and is losing in the first half, they often double up. You see some wacky second-half lines on really big teams. Um, and then, as you said, the second factor, you can see how Stanford's actually playing. Now, when you have, if you have the opportunity to bet Stanford and Stanford's winning, sometimes you'll just get some nutty lines. So when a dog that's not supposed to be winning is, is outplaying the other team and is winning, you, you can find some tremendous value betting against public teams. Right, right. Okay, great. All right. So, so you mentioned that Idaho is your best play of the week at about plus thirty-one. I think um, the line I know did go up from opening. You want to talk about that one a little? Uh, my best play of the week is Idaho. Right now, you can get them at plus thirty-one, even money. But I think I'd wait till Friday or maybe even Saturday morning, and you might get a thirty-one and a half. Yeah, that, it was actually one of the games that uh, I was going to ask you about and predict that maybe uh, you would like it and say that I liked it too. But uh, I did get spooked a little by, by the reports of, of uh, Idaho having, quarterback, have is having issues at quarterback. They're not sure who's going to start at QB in this one. Their starting quarterback is injured. Their backup quarterback, they're not sure if he's going to play. So are you taking that uh, quarterback situation into consideration at all or not, not looking at it? Oh, I am, and I like it more because of that. Oh, really? Why? I, when you have... Well, I'm assuming people are betting it early because, I mean, I think it opened up at 28 and got bet up to 31. Uh, I think 28 was a better line even with the backup quarterback in, and I think the market has overreacted to this backup quarterback. So, I mean, you have a collision of things that often give you great value in a game. You have a backup quarterback who's still pretty good. You have a powerhouse team that the public likes to bet. And I have a, a team that's actually competitive. I know who's 7-3 and three this year. Uh, and, they, I mean, they've been playing pretty well. Um, you know, I... I it wouldn't surprise me if they pulled off a huge upset. Um, I, I just don't think they're that outclassed. And, and you give me 31 points, I'm loving it. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, they, they definitely have been a team that, uh, that's come up a lot this year as, as a team uh, with value by Sharps. All right. Um, yeah, I want to I qualify one thing I said, though, okay? Uh, the Idaho money line is at plus 6,500. If you did throw a little bit on Idaho, I'd re recommend no more than about a 30th of a unit. <laughs> All right. So anyone who's going to tell Justin on this, don't go for broke on the Idaho uh, money line. Put 1 30th of a unit on it. 1 30th of a unit. But, uh, but I mean, it's, it's a lot. At plus 31, 31 and a half, it's, it's on my lock board. All right. We got it. Thanks. All right, so that's it for, uh, for week 11, college football, Mississippi State and Pitt. Justin and I both have leans on. We disagree on BYU New Mexico. Justin, of course, likes the dog. And, uh, and Justin's big pick of the week, again, is Idaho. Come to SBRforum.com where discussions on all this will continue. For SBR.TV, I'm Peter Loshak.